Hi, I'm Professor David Atlee, and this is Topics in Astronomy. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be talking to you about planetary ring systems. What are they? Where do they come from? And how do they organize themselves? Let's get started. Ring systems show up in all of the gas giants within our own solar system. This is partly a coincidence, but also partly due to the fact that the gas giants in our solar system have lots and lots of moons. And the presence of moons is extremely important for the generation of ring systems, as we'll see in a minute. Basically, a ring system is a collection of billions upon billions of tiny particles, whether they're rock or ice, all orbiting collectively under the influence of the planet's gravity. Those particles organize themselves through the influence of other structures into sharp, tightly defined ring systems like Saturn's, which you see pictured across the bottom of the slide. One thing you'll note is that in that right-hand image, when we're looking at Saturn's ring system edge on, it's very, very sharp. If you blew up a piece of paper to the size of Saturn's ring systems, it would actually be fatter than the rings are. Um, so they're super duper duper thin. Interestingly, this means that when Saturn is near one of its equinoxes and we're seeing it right on edge with its equator, the ring systems actually disappear from telescope images for a little while. Um, so if you just happen to have bad luck and try and show your kid or look yourself and try and see Saturn's ring systems for the first time, uh, sometimes it can be pretty disappointing. So where do all of these billions of ring particles come from? We think that they're created when a moon wanders too close to the parent planet and gets shredded by the tidal forces of the parent planet's gravity. The boundary where this happens has a name, it's called the Roche limit, and where it is depends on the mass and composition of a moon, so some moons can get closer than others depending on how strong gravity is in holding the moon together. If the moon gets too close, the forces pulling the moon apart due to tides are greater than the force of gravity holding the moon together, and the moon will begin to disintegrate. And that's what you see depicted on the left-hand side of the slide. So the parts of the moon that are really, really close to the planet, that are colored sort of a pinkish, reddish color, those get pulled more towards the planet than the blue particles. And so that moon gets stretched out and begins to dissipate. And the orbits of all of those particles continue. So they're going to still keep going around the planet and then we'll see them spread out over a wide area in diameter and create this orderly ring system that we've come to associate in particular with the planet Saturn. But those ring particles, they can collide, just like pool balls. And if you break a bunch of pool balls, those pool balls are gonna scatter off randomly in all directions. So why don't ring particles do that? Why are the rings able to maintain their orderly structure and remain stable. So we see all of these sharp divisions, especially in Saturn's rings. I like to pick on Saturn because it has a really spectacular ring system, but we see these same features in the other planets too. So Saturn has that really super thin ring, and then if we look, we can also see really sharp divisions between different pieces of Saturn's ring. So that central image that you're seeing is a highlight of the Cassini division recorded by Saturn's Cassini spacecraft. So that's not confusing at all, is it? So how do we end up maintaining these very sharp ring structures in the presence of all these scattering forces which would like to just blast everything and make it go off in random directions? And the answer to this puzzle is the presence of structures called shepherd moons. Shepherd moons are very, very tiny, so they're not shredded by Saturn's gravity the way larger moons would be. So they can exist inside of that Roche limit within the ring system. And the gravity of those shepherd moons will tug errant ring particles back into place. Um, and that's where the name comes from. So shepherds, 
What do they do? They herd sheep. They nudge sheep and keep them all in the herd going in the same direction. And that's basically what shepherd moons do too. If there's a ring particle that wanders out of its designated orbit, the gravity from the shepherd moons collectively will tug it back into place and keep the ring stable. So the two shepherd moons that you see highlighted on that Cassini image on the left-hand side of the slide work together to maintain that very fine single ring that's on the left-hand side of the image. Saturn is the planet that's most famous for its rings. Uh, Saturn's rings were originally discovered by Galileo when he first started using a telescope to do astronomy. Uh, famously, he remarked in his notes that it looked like Saturn has ears, uh, so just big old ears on the side of its head. As telescopes got better, we figured out that no, Saturn doesn't actually have ears. It has this system of rings that are surrounding the planet. And then over time, our information got better and better, and we were able to resolve these rings more and more. And so you see some different images of Saturn using different, different degrees of technology. Um, so the lower right-hand image, that's from uh, Giovanni Cassini, who first discovered uh, the Cassini division. It's a hand-drawn diagram from a relatively poor telescope. And then there's a slightly improved uh, engraving from the Royal Society from the 19th century, and then finally the big image is from NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which actually went to Saturn and took pictures up close. These rings are easily seen from the Earth because they're extremely bright. Uh, so they're made mostly of ice. Ice is really highly reflective, so it reflects lots of sunlight and makes it easy for us to see. Um, probably Saturn, to make these rings, shredded one of its very icy moons. Um, so Saturn has a very famous icy moon called Enceladus. Maybe it used to have a twin that Saturn shredded to create the moons. That's entirely plausible. But Saturn is not the only solar system planet that has a ring system. All of the other Jovian planets do too. It's just that we didn't discover those until relatively recently. Uh, Jupiter's ring wasn't found until 1979 when the planet was visited by the Voyager 1 spacecraft. Uh, Jupiter's ring is very thin and it's made of very dark material, so it's impossible to see in direct sunlight from the Earth. Voyager was able to see it because Voyager turned back towards Jupiter after passing the planet and saw Jupiter highlighted by sunlight and it detected this very thin ring in scattered sunlight surrounding the planet Jupiter. Um, and that's the discovery image that you see across the bottom of the slide. Uranus also has a ring system as well. They're also thin and faint and dark. But Uranus has the unique honor of having had its ring systems discovered in the 20th century, but not by a spacecraft. There were a group of astronomers who were observing what's called an occultation. So Uranus moves between the Earth and a distant star, blocks that starlight. And as they were watching this occultation, they saw the star wink and wink and wink again. And then the planet moved in the way and then the winking occurred again. And they figured out, oh, this is happening because there are some rings surrounding the planet Uranus. And the rings are briefly blocking the starlight, making the star appear just a little bit dimmer. Uranus was then later visited by Voyager 2, which captured the image that you see on the right-hand side of the slide. So Uranus does have these very thin rings, and Uranus also has at least some shepherd moons. Voyager was able to identify a couple of shepherd, shepherd moons the moons that you see circled, responsible for maintaining that darkest and fattest ring that you see moving across the center of the image. And, just like its cousins, Neptune also has a ring system. Neptune's rings were not discovered until a visit by Voyager 2 in 1989. Um, like Jupiter and Uranus, Neptune's rings are made of very faint, very dark material. Um, it's possibly especially dark due to radiation, which tends to basically tarnish organic material. Um, so the color of Neptune's ring particles is very, very similar to coal. It's very, very dark and does not do a good job at all of reflecting sunlight. Neptune's rings are unique in that they appear to be clumpy. Um, if you look at this enhanced image, this is still those same ring systems, uh, but it's been enhanced by the people who wrote the OpenStax astronomy textbook. 
And if you look across the foreground of that image, across the bottom, you can see lumps where the ring is denser and there appears to be more ring material available to reflect sunlight than at other places along the ring. This is really weird, um, so we're still not sure why this happens. It's got to be due to some sort of a dynamical process in the ring system, but it hasn't yet been particularly well explained. In this video, we've talked about planetary ring systems. It turns out that all four of the Jovian planets in our solar system have rings. We think that rings are formed when a moon wanders too close to its parent planet and gets shredded by the tidal forces from the parent planet's gravity. The material from that moon then turns into a ring system, but the ring systems are transient. They don't stick around forever. They require shepherd moons to help maintain order and keep the ring structure intact. So we're probably actually quite lucky to be able to observe Saturn's spectacular ring system, chances are that it's going to dissipate in a few hundred thousand years, and we've just been lucky enough to observe Saturn right now when there is a very spectacular ring system available for viewing. Thanks for watching, and I hope to talk to you again soon for another Topic in Astronomy.